Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Gaming Telecom video, let us discuss PC gaming. And according to developers, they believe that it's never been stronger. Now, this is a bit strange because, at least to some people, because, you know, we're hearing a lot about tablets taking over and we're hearing about, um, you know, PC, the global shipments of like ready made systems being. Well, slowing, basically. And this is particularly true of, like, the Dells and so on. But yesterday, there was PAX East, and there was an extremely interesting uh, live stream panel, and it was known as The Incredible Future of PC Gaming. And during which, the speakers were Oculus Rift co-founder. Um, there was the Planet Side 2 creative director, there was Star Citizen, uh, NVIDIA, um, PC Game. Uh, uh, editor as well and there were various other bits and pieces all going on and one of the quotes was PC gaming is open it's highly powerful it's flexible moddable malleable it's not a one-size-fits-all it's gaming's greatest breeding ground for experimentation and original ideas there's no platform that offers the same amount of choice value variety or performance as PC gaming and indeed that's not to say that everyone agreed. So, for example, Peterson himself, um, he pointed out that um, he believes that the PC is going to be becoming much more cloud-orientated. For example, streaming games anywhere from your PC. Now, in case you're not too familiar with that, uh, this is from NVIDIA, by the way. Um, that's Tom Peterson. Um for example, devices like Shield and Steam and so on now do allow you to do a lot of that. So, for example, you can stream your game from your PC, from your high-spec PC to like a lower-spec PC or your Shield device and plug it into like a, the living room, which is quite a handy way to do it if you so desire. And he believes that that's going to become like the big thing. And he says that the ability to get great PC gaming experience anywhere on any devices. Now... Um, that wasn't necessarily um, agreed with. For example, the Oculus VR founder actually disagreed with that, and he said that he believes it's far too optimistic. Um, and in, But NVIDIA are trying to basically push the PC as a gaming device for the same game and even the same saves. So another point that was made was that Star Citizen in 4K or very high resolutions if you've got the machine capable of running it and let's face it judging by the system specifications and the demos that we've seen most people don't but let's just assume you do he says you know you just can't really do that on a mobile device and of course we're not necessarily talking about the resolution on that screen but we're talking about the actual experiences and the performance or with even streaming and he also believes that 4K resolution, because obviously 4K is a big problem right now. Um, first of all, the GPUs to run the bloody thing are just ludicrously expensive, both in terms of memory, um, cost your bank, as well as the screens themselves are extremely expensive. You're getting 1440p ones, which are getting a bit better. But 4K is just far too expensive. They are starting to come down in price. And... Of course, he also took the chance to pitch the G-Sync, which, um, just in case you're not too familiar with it, basically helps to eliminate screen tearing and also helps to reduce frame juddering, which are synonymous issues, by the way, with vertical sync either turned on or off. So, moving on from that, one of the interesting things that's coming out is um, regarding the... Mantle and DirectX 12. He says that he's happy actually with the movement of the X12 and Mantle, which allow you to actually make full use of the hardware. Because he said it's very frustrating to have a very powerful PC and not be able to fully use it like a console because the operating system gates resources away. On the other hand, you can move closer to the hardware and you get a fair amount of improvement. Ultimately, PC gaming has always been big and always been around. So he doesn't really think that PC going, gaming is not a platform. As far as he's concerned, PC has always been a platform. The biggest platform at that it isn't just taking away the same headline. Wow has probably made more money than any other gaming history of gaming, including all the co big co uh, console gaming franchises. He also mentions that piracy has dropped 
dropping due to games moving online and on new games business platforms enabling developers to actually run a company of making PC games and as well he actually got quite a lot of agreement with this Peterson himself actually had numbers to back this up and he said that Nvidia estimates that 24 billion dollars of yearly revenue for PC gaming including sales digital downloads microtransactions subscriptions bloody bloody blah, blah, blah think about it this is the problem, PC gaming, you do get a lot of piracy on it, but then you're going to be getting it on all the consoles. I can almost guarantee you in a couple of years' time, we're going to be seeing console piracy, right? Because there's no piracy on the PS3 or 360 when they first emerged, and now so many people pirate on the Xbox 360. I'm not using this to, like, judge anyone. I'm not saying piracy is wrong, right? I don't want to get into that debate, but I'm more just pointing it out. But, you know, a lot of people pirate on consoles. So when people say piracy, yes, it is technically easier to do on PC, but consoles also have their fair share of it. And let's face it, everyone knows someone who knows someone that can mod a console if they so really wish to do it. PC, the one benefit of PC now is it's becoming very, very cheap. <laughs> it really is. It's like... If you if you play your cards right and you don't buy games when they don't when they first come out or you pre-order when the price is down on like Steam or let's say it's a game that you're not 100% interested in you know it's like yeah it looks all right but you're not sure you've got other games to play okay just wait for the Steam sale because it's like four a year or it could be on like a random deal, or it could be on Green Man Gaming, or Origin, or whatever, that's really cheap. And when you do that, you can get the game like 75% off, which is just absolutely ludicrous. So that's definitely cutting down piracy. Because, you know, you could kind of make the argument, okay, I'm going to pirate a £40 game. You know, you can be like, okay, I'm going to pirate that because I can't really afford it. But when you know, Steam are charging like five or ten pounds for a game. You, it's not, you know, pirating that just, it's just not really worth it. So anyway, moving on. Also took the opportunity to give another little bit of a plug. He said, um, lucky, uh, um, lucky by the way, just in case you're not too familiar with uh, uh, the little chap, he is um, the Oculus VR founder. Just once again to reiterate. Anyway. He pointed out that now that we're going to be seeing this, he also moved on to explaining the problem with developers right now is they're focused so much on visual fidelity and too little in reducing latency. And it's not as simple as running at 60 frames per second because 60 is not some magical benchmark um, because you have many layers of buffering, all kinds of crazy shit, that's his words, going on to create hundreds of milliseconds of latency. He doesn't even know how these games are playable. And Peterson pushback to Microsoft explaining that the long-standing partners NVIDIA had um, Microsoft a lot of resources into PC gaming great deal but they're things that need working on that's what DX12 and yet way more to go do beyond like latency improvements and experience improvements when you think about it this is a major problem because really and truly latency and this is like FCAT kind of stuff which is frame rate timings Basically, the, the premise is that a frame of animation doesn't necessarily mean it's going to take the same amount of time. By the way, to get uh, milliseconds of latency, um, all you have to do is times, or not times, I'm sorry, get 1000 and then divide it by the frame rate. And that should be the latency per frame. So, for example, it could be 33.33 ms, just for example, per frame of animation. And that should be how much each individual frame. So, frame 1 to 2 should take 33.3. I'm just going to say 33 because I'm going to go insane if I keep saying 33.33. So, let's say frame 1 to 2 should take 33, frame 2 to 3, 33 once again, and so forth and so forth. But in reality, that doesn't necessarily happen, particularly if you're dealing with like Crossfire or... Um, SLI, though, the drivers are improving for this, my iron. And Microsoft's, you know, DX12 isn't necessarily going to be a lot better like that. Um, Star Citizen is going to support Linux, which is fantastic, uh, but he still thinks that uh, Windows is going to be the dominant OS. Um, and he's also going to be utilizing multiple core CPUs, which is what DX12 and Mantle are all about. 
And he also doesn't mind rubble rousing, those are his words, um, to convince them that, you know what, don't just focus on the bloody Xbox. This has been a huge issue with PC gaming. It's Microsoft's fault, and I, I, I say that with love, but it was. And I think one of the issues was that they just really tried to push the Xbox brand to kind of control a lot of the games, a lot of the exclusives, and it really didn't really work for them. They need to make the two platforms coexist peacefully with one another, and I think they'd be a lot better off. And I feel that's what they are trying to do with the X12, might I add. Um, now... He also believes that Roberts, I mean Chris Roberts um, from Star Citizen, also believes that the, the companies like Dell, which show a decline in PC gaming, doesn't really make a bloody blind bit of difference because PC gamers build most of the time their own PC or they will buy you know, the parts after their friend Tom gives them the part list or they'll just say to their friend you know, Johnny, hey Johnny, here's x amount of cash spec me build me a system or they'll go to like a shop that pre does it for them you know they'll just tell them uh, i've got a shop kind of near me that does the same thing i don't use it because you know i have no need but all you have to do is just go to them and say look these are the games that i want to play this is how much money i've got to spend done and uh, loads of other online stores do the same thing in fact there are a couple in the uk i'm not going to drop names because i don't want to be doing avatar oh fuck it who cares um like oc uk novatech and a couple of others i don't really care i'm not doing advertising for them but you know i might as well mention them and all you have to do is just call them up say look this is what i want this is what i need i ever don't have time to make the system myself or these are the specs that i need i don't understand or this is what i want it to do i don't understand what it's doing help me done and they'll just do it for you well there's forums to help you so yeah dell and so on you know slowing down probably isn't going to help anything but um well, at least from their perspective but it's not a huge massive big deal particularly when we start having ridiculously powerful gpus now anyway now steam os is all about having the living room right and he believes that you know SteamOS is going to expand the potential of what PC game can do, but not necessarily be like the be-all and end-all. And as PC gaming is a platform, there are now 26 million users, by the way, that are using GeForce Experience, which is helping to configure the settings. Now, this is what I was saying previously, because um, GeForce Experience and all other applications, AMD offer their own application, and there are others that are popping about anyway, but they basically configure the game for you. Um, and I know people, I'm, I'm damn deadly serious here, I do know people that buy the game and at best they will change the resolution. I'm talking at pure best, they will change the resolution. Um, and games now, you know, a lot of them do have the automatically configured, but that's there's sometimes a bit dodgy stuff there, particularly if you're using uh, different drivers or a later graphics card. For example, let's say that you bought the game when the GTX 680 was released, and then the 780, some games are like, I don't understand what this is, I'm going to just configure you to be medium specifications. And there are a tons of other stuff. Um, in fact, Chris... Roberts, once again from Star Citizen, he points out that 64-bit needs to just come now. That's why Star Citizen is 64-bit exclusive. 32-bit just needs to die, really. It just can't address enough memory, and there are dozens of other issues with it. Meanwhile, Peterson says that GPUs now are becoming extremely powerful. Not anything new. I really do need to finish my parallel computing thing. I can only apologize for being a bit shitty recently in videos. It's absolutely awful of me, I know. But unfortunately, as people know, I've been kind of clearing out furniture. and It's just not been good the last few days for me. It's been really crappy. But I'm back on it from today, basically. I've been kind of researching things for the Order 1886 uh, analysis. And goodness knows what else. So I'm going to be kind of working on that. But also, as I was talking about with the parallel computing, so GPUs are becoming incredibly powerful. And 
they believe now NVIDIA that now we're actually getting these machines that are powerful enough, we can actually do machine learning. So several years from now, we can actually play against AI that are actually trained and are actually different than anyone else's AIs. What does that mean? Well, let's say that you, this is a really retardedly simple example, but let's say that you're playing a particular game, let's say a racing game, Actually, no, a racing game is a crap example. I know. Let's say that you're playing a shooting game, a shoot 'em up, right? Like a, a quake type of game. And let's say that normally you go around a pillar to the a column, uh, to the, say the left, every single time. It, you don't know why you do it. It's a, just a habit you've picked up. And let's assume that there's two overhangs. Well, you know, the last time we sniped the, you know, the bot, you do it again. You do it again, the bot's like, you know what, I know what you're doing now because I'm actually learning your pattern. And because of that, I'm going to remember that you always take the same route and now they're just going to camp you. That's just a simple example, maybe like a one-on-one -on -one type of scenario. Now, learning isn't particularly new. AI has been doing this for a while. I mean, goodness knows, if you guys remember Virtual Fighter 2 for the Saturn, um, yeah, this is going back a bit. When I was really young, I was playing this game and I loved Virtual Fighter 2, it's like my love affair. And there was a mode there, I've mentioned this previously, but I'll, you know, rehash it. And there was a mode there where you could actually train up, your, like, the computer. Basically, it's the, they would start out completely thick. I'm talking like, if they punched you if you weren't blocking, um, I'm just talking about the regular, just pressing the B button punch, you were, you were doing well. And they would do very little. But you would basically fight. So you'd go in this mode and you would basically fight with your character versus the same character. It would mirror match you. So let's just assume that you went in with like Lao. It would put you in with Lao. And the idea was that you would basically train the computer to get better. Now, that's not to say that it wasn't foolproof. Um, there were some issues with it. Primarily that it sucked with the timing of like combos with juggles primarily like... Um, floating juggles and also there were some habits like the jump back like if you would jump back the computer would run at you and then you could constantly just keep doing that to it and it would consistently fall for it but it did certainly pick up some uh, good habits and it you know i would be completely honest like i was a virtual fighter 2 whore for quite a long time a couple of years and then I started to move on to other fighter games. I moved on to like fighters, Megabix, fighting Vipers. I was still playing VF2 a bit. And then I moved on to like Tekken 2 and Tekken 3. And I have this uh, uh, friend, well, I still do of course, but um, him and I used to play like fighter games a lot. And him and I would always come around each other's houses to play and, you know, We'd always be joking with each other. Oh, I wonder how good Virtual Fighter 2 is. Like, if we'd get our butts kicked um, by you know the computer anymore. So I actually put myself in against a couple of different characters that I trained up on VF2, and I got absolutely decimated. I got absolutely reamed. It was actually quite embarrassing. And he tried as well. He got absolutely murdered as well, which made me feel quite a lot better. And the basic premise is the AI did learn. It, it's not necessarily it learned 100% because it was basically just kind of figuring out some stuff. I, I was, uh, to be honest with you, it's been so long since I've played the game. I don't exactly know the learning process that the computer actually did because I was like, you know, I wasn't even a teenager at the time, basically. So I was far too young to really understand how the computer was doing all this. But, um,. What was interesting is that it could do it, but now, with these ridiculously powerful GPUs, I do feel that we're going to be seeing much better AI. And a lot of this really does have to come to GPU computing, because CPUs just aren't powerful enough to do it, to be honest. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, wasn't it? That wasn't intentional. This is what happens when I move away from tech for a while. Um, there was some stuff coming up on the channel over the next few days that I can't really discuss right now because it's going to take me a long ass time and I need to do a vlog. Uh, I've actually got the camera charger back for Marta, which is going to be handy because that means I can actually do a vlog. So I'll probably do one tomorrow or on Monday, depending on the levels of despair I get from doing like a dozen other things. Anyway, 
I'm going to get going because I need to go eat, record, uh, edit, and, you know, various other bits and bobs. So I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.